Church in downtown Lake Charles to our worship center. I'm Weldon Barrez and... And I'm Katie Black. We're the pastors here and so glad that you are joining us for our Wednesday 12 noon Bible study. And we have a really good topic for us today. We're going to turn to the Old Testament to the book of 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 1 through 15. The version that we use each week, just so we're all on the same page with the same Bible, is if you have it at home, the New King James Version of the Bible. So if you have that, I hope you get it and you look at it and be following along with us as we do it. Last week, we had a story from the New Testament right. about Paul and Silas in prison, and this week is a story from the Old Testament. Uh, as you have comments or questions during our study, uh, send them on Facebook, and Reverend Katie, as the study goes on and mainly at the end, is going to call attention to those and we'll be talking about those questions and coming up with some answers for them. Uh, Katie's going to lead us in a word of prayer and then has an announcement for us, Steve. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We give you thanks for letting us see your word. We ask that you open our hearts and let us take just a few minutes to give glory to you, to study, to be refreshed, and to know that your glory is what matters. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught all of his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As you may know, our day of caring is not going to be just a day of caring, but also just kind of throughout this month, we're going to be doing different service projects. Our day of caring project for this week will be the Faith and Friends Food Pantry. So pick up a jar of peanut butter or some other perishable, non-perishable food items, no, not, not perishable food items, and we can be dropping them off at the church office. If you look on Facebook, you'll see uh, what our designated drop times and drop zones are to help out the Faith and Friends Food Pantry. I like us to talk about just a, a fun thing real quick before we get to the Bible study, as fun as the Bible mm -hmm. study is, but something that's not biblical. Um, during this downtime, what, what TV are you watching? What Netflix or mm -hmm. series? So there's a show on Netflix I've been watching, and they just released season two uh, and burned through it in a couple of hours. It's called Dead to Me. Uh, it's got a, it's kind of a dark comedy. It's got uh, drama, and it's funny, but it's kind of quirky, dark funny. Um, it's rated R a little bit, but uh, it, but it is a fun show. I've, I've been enjoying it. What this is you, season three? So this is season two. So they've season got two. two seasons now. Ah, okay. And they're pretty short, about 30-minute episodes or so. Mm -hmm. What about you? I'm watching on ESPN a really good series about Michael Jordan mm. and um, mainly his last year with the Chicago Bulls. It's called The Last Dance. It's uh, 10 episodes. Mm -hmm. I'm about uh, four or five into it right now. Excellent good guy. Okay, you ready for the Bible study? Let's do it. All right, at home, if you would turn to the book of 2 Kings in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 5, and we're going to read verses 1 through 15. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. I'm going to read about half of it, then Reverend Katie's going to pick it up. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out of, on raids and brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went in, and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. So the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when this letter comes to you, but I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends to me a man to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. 
So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me, and he shall know there is a prophet in Israel. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you. You shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not Abana and the far, far rivers of rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God all in his aids and came and stood before him. And he said, Indeed, now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now, therefore, please take a gift from your servant. What an exciting story. Um, it, it so irritates me when I hear people say, oh, the Bible's a dull book. It's a boring book. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they haven't read the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, I ask at home, have you heard of this story before? Have you read this story about Elisha and Naaman and the Jordan River? Um, there's several main characters in the story. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can name some of them and, and just talk about them. Then I have some, some basic questions I want us to think about about this story of God's healing. Um, the first character that comes to mind is Elisha, mm-hmm. one of the prophets. And right. You have a little background for us sure. on Elisha. So Elisha is somebody who you should always know in name with Elijah. So they go together a little bit. And so Elijah is spelled with the J-A-H and Elisha is the S-H-A. So Elijah was the predecessor to Elisha. And Elijah heard a vision from God saying that Elisha is going to be following you. And so he goes and finds Elisha in the field. And he goes and immediately just takes off his cloak and puts his mantle upon Elisha. And Elisha immediately accepts his calling. He makes this uh, sacrifice and kind of burns all bridges and leaves everything and starts doing ministry. He kills his oxen. So that's his job is over. He's now a prophet. He is now a prophet. They start going and they start walking in the same footsteps for, for many years. And eventually, the mantle of which Elijah, this great prophet of the Old Testament, it's time to pass on. And so Elisha asks for a double measure of blessing. And so Elijah gives it to him and says, basically, you're going to do twice as many miracles as I do, which is impressive because Mm -hmm. Elijah is no lightweight in the prophet industry. And so as they're walking and they're crossing across the River Jordan, that one of my favorite verses in the Bible, it's like a plot twist moment. And it says, as they were walking together, a great chariot of fire came and swept up Elijah and he was ascended into heaven. And which has never happened to me when I've been walking along the road. Never happened to me, thank goodness. <laughs> Little plot twist. Yeah. But so then you have Elijah goes. Elijah mm-hmm. and Elisha. And before Elijah was taken up into heaven, Elisha said to him, please give me a double portion of your spirit. Mm-hmm. And that was his prayer. Yeah. And God did answer that prayer and gave him a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. So we have the great prophet of God, Mm -hmm. Elisha. He's one of the the key characters in this story. Um, Second guy is Naaman. Naaman. Now, Naaman was a powerful general and leader in Syria. Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 1. So at home, I invite you to turn again to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, because it kind of paints a quick little picture of Naaman. Reads like this. Now, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Look at those words of description Mm -hmm. of Naaman. What are some that jump out? Commander of army. Okay, that's the first thing. He's a commander. Um, In verse the, the right second part of one. verse one, he was a great and honorable, and honorable man. Um, the Lord had given him victory. victory. Uh, mighty. He was a mighty man of valor. Valor. <laughs> so look at the, the word descriptions. Commander, honorable, great, victory, mighty, 
man, valor. So this big description of this hot shot general of Syria, he was the man. Mm -hmm. And then we had that little phrase. But a leper. But he was a leper. Little three words. Three yeah, just that little phrase. It just kind of undercuts everything that yeah. he's done. Three letters. That's what I was looking for. Three little letters, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. all these great things, but he was a leper. You know, that's that's true for us, isn't it? It happens, yeah. Yeah. Like we say, Reverend Katie, excellent preacher, teacher, counselor, friend, but mm -hmm. Reverend Weldon, know. this, 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 but. So think about your life for a second. As you describe your own life, is there that little three-letter word, but? There's always the exception. There's yeah. always the just that one little point. That's something that's not right, mm -hmm. that, that, that little growing edge, mm -hmm. that little pain weakness. in the side, that yeah. little weakness, yeah. So Naaman certainly had that, and, um, and this points to him. Mm -hmm. Let's think about leprosy for a second, sure. because that was that three-letter word. But he had yeah, leprosy. leprosy. Yeah. When I like when I think of leprosy, it's almost like somebody saying, "Hey, did you just walk into a spider web?" And you're just your entire body just kind of shivers a little bit, and you're going, "Where is it? Get it off me! Get it off me! Is there a spider on me?" And you can just feel it a little bit. That's what I think about when I think of leprosy. Is it just instant itching and it, yeah. what's wrong? Yeah, leprosy was not. A little thing no. in the days of the Bible. To, to have leprosy was a major deal, a major illness. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to read a, a quick little paragraph from the encyclopedia as by way of background about leprosy. Leprosy, also called Hansen's disease, is a chronic infectious disease. Primarily affects the skin. It affects the nervous system. It can affect the eyes, liver, spleen, muscles, bone marrow, um, it's not usually fatal. Patients with untreated or neglected infections may develop crippling deformities of the hands and feet. It goes on to say that through the years, people with leprosy have been victims of fear and prejudice, largely because of those deformities. And in many societies, they were castaways. They could not be a part of the society. And that continues on to the time of Jesus. You meet lepers and they are cast out. They are outsiders in society. Can't come near them shouting, unclean, unclean. It was like the worst medical diagnosis that you could get mm -hmm. to be diagnosed as leprosy. So you have Naaman, this mighty general of Syria, but he had leprosy. Okay, another character in the story. The slave girl. We meet her only for a brief moment in the beginning of chapter 5, and all we know about her is that she was a young captive girl from the land of Israel that as Naaman's army captured this part, they brought back this girl. She's a figure in the story. What's her name? We don't know her name. Her name is not mentioned in the scripture. Um, now, to me, she's the hero of the story because without that slave girl, Naaman would not have known to go see Elisha and he wouldn't have found the healing and the story would not have been there. She's the hero of the story, but we don't even know her name. There's, there's so many times that that happens in our lives when just somebody in the background, just kind of the mouse in somebody's pocket makes all the difference in the world and we don't even know about it. Yeah, let me just add on to that and concur with that. So often it's someone in the background, in the shadows, we don't even know their name, but they can make all the difference in the world. Do you have somebody like that? I, I know I do, I, and sometimes I can't even remember who they are at the time. Mm -hmm. But there are people, and they just, their little action somewhere just causes a big ripple effect. Yeah, she's the hero of the story. Mm -hmm. Don't even know her name. Okay, the next person is the king of Syria. Mm -hmm. Let's look at verse 5 in our scripture reading. And I just lost 2 Kings, so you read okay. that. So in 2 Kings chapter 5, or ver chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. And then dropping down, you can see this letter. It says, Now be advised, when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman, the big shot general, goes mm -hmm. to his boss, the king of Syria, <laughs> Syria goes <laughs> king of Syria, and asks for permission. And the king of Syria says, By all means, and he writes a letter to pave the way for him yeah. to go. 
which is a kind move and kind of using his king authority a little bit to say, here's this man coming. I want you to help him. That, I, I think that's a good move on his part. Then we come to the king of Israel. He's in verse 7. Mm-hmm. Reads like this, and it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. Now we're going to talk in just a little bit more about this this king of Israel and why he reacted the way that he did. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the, the last character who's not really in these first 15 verses, but if you keep on reading the story, his name is Gehazi. G-E-H-A-Z-I, and he's the servant for Elisha. Mm-hmm. And he's a little bit of a slime ball and he scumbag. Is. He is. He, he's a slime ball, and, and you'll agree with us as you read the rest of the story. Um, well, Katie, as, as we read 2 Kings chapter 5 mm-hmm. and we think about it, several questions come to mind that I want um, you and for, for me to think about and for those watching at home to think about too. Um, first question is, why was that slave girl so kind? Uh, here she is. She's a slave, mm-hmm. and she helps the person who was her captor. Right, right. So after this war, they bring her into their household, and she's the one who says, if only you knew there was a prophet in Israel and he can make this better. I think that there are just some things, and I think leprosy is probably on that list, that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. And this might well be her worst enemy, the people who took her from mm-hmm. her home. Mm-hmm. But she, there are some things you don't wish on your worst enemy, mm-hmm. and I think she she recognizes that. Um, I would certainly agree. Why was she so kind? I think that's a valid answer. I think also that maybe she was a person of faith, that um, she knew about Elisha in Israel. Mm-hmm. She knew about uh, God's healing power through him, Obviously, she believed in it because right. she was asking Naaman to go see him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think she was a person of faith. I agree. I think I think she was definitely a person of faith. And I wonder, I'll bet she couldn't have openly talked about her faith in that household. I'll bet it wasn't welcome. But also, they had suddenly gotten to a point where this was a person who had leprosy and he was at the height of his career and it was probably all going to spiral down. And so when she probably couldn't have been saying, no, let me tell you about the God of Israel, that probably wouldn't have been welcome. But when somebody has a problem and your faith can help fix it, I think people are a little bit more, the rules change a little bit when you're desperate. Bottom line being, if you're a person of faith, you will be kind and you're going to help somebody out who's in desperate need. Mm -hmm. And this little slave girl who's the hero of the story, we don't even know her name, she's an example of that. right. Okay, next question, Mm -hmm. and this kind of puzzles me. Why did the king of Israel freak out when he read that letter? Yeah, this is such a strange reaction. It says, am I God to kill and make alive? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. I I didn't see a quarrel in that letter. Maybe maybe I misread it. Maybe maybe y'all see it differently. I didn't see him saying, well, I'm going to just start a war with this guy if he can't fix the problem. What? What's going on? Okay, let's rack our brains with this. Guys at home looking for some answers for you from this. Why did the king of Israel read the letter from the king of Syria and all of a sudden he freaks out? Mm -hmm. Um, And talking about it beforehand, we were kind of thinking it could be that the king of Israel had some insecurities. I think so. I think he just, there was something in him that knew he didn't have what it took to a fix this situation i think he was a little bit insecure in his place as a king that he feels like there's a threat coming from this letter from another king and something's off a little bit yeah it, it probably also has to do with his fear of syria uh, mm-hmm. he was afraid of the king of syria and had heard so much about his hot shot general naaman and now the king of syria is sending his hot shot general naaman over there so the king of Israel is now, he's freaked out. He's yeah. scared. Yeah. He's thinking, I have to entertain and take care of all take this. Take care of this guy. Is it a trap? I don't know. He's sending his best general. Is he going to just bring his army and take over if we don't help? I, I, I think he's scared. He's insecure. There's something not quite, he's not on top of his game for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. And probably some missing pieces of the puzzle mm-hmm. that we don't know about. Because whatever it is, 
in reading the story, he freaked out and he tore his clothes. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it just seems like a, a big overreaction to yeah. me. Heather Williams says maybe the Israelite king thought it was a trap, that it would maybe be like a surprise assault. That's uh, a, like, that's oh, a good that, thought. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. I keep checking because I'm like, y'all should give us the answer. Yeah, this, hello yeah. out there. Send in some answers. <laughs> Terry is... Gray says insecurity and afraid, so he lashed out. Mm. I like mm. that. Okay, question four. Naaman goes to the home of Elisha, mm -hmm. wanting to be healed of leprosy. Um, but he, he, he gets so furious, he storms away. Yeah. Uh, if you look in 2 Kings chapter 5, in verse 11 and 12, but Naaman became furious and went away. And then towards the end, so he turned and went away in a rage. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't disappointed. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't despondent. He was furious. He was in a rage. He was angry. Why did he react that way? I think he's just mad as tar that he came all this way and there doesn't even seem to be, and he's not entertained with an audience. He's a, he's a big shot. He deserves to have a big audience, and he, he doesn't have anything right now. He is the big shot in Syria, aside from the king. He's, he's like the number two guy. He travels all that way mm -hmm. to see the prophet, and the prophet doesn't even come to the front door. Yeah, and the, it, I think this is also interesting. They tell him to go and wash in the River Jordan, and I went ahead and brought this. This was also water from the River Jordan, and you can kind of tell it's a blue jar, so it makes the water look a lot more clear than it actually is. But... He is Naaman's from Syria, and he in the rivers near Damascus. I, I think of it a little bit like this. It's almost like he's kind of from the Caribbean, and he goes over and comes into Lake Charles, and they're like, "All right, just go down to Holly Beach and just start washing in what I call the chocolate milk, and it'll be fine." And you're going, "This is this is not even a beach." Mm -hmm. And I think I think he's a little bit offended. Mm -hmm. I definitely think so. You wouldn't drink that, would you? Oh, no. Not in a million years. Yeah, make you sick as a dog, yeah. for sure. Yeah. In modern-day terms, it'd be like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff wants to come see um, the, the prophet of Lake Charles. And so he flies here in Air Force One, and there's a motorcade to Lock Lane, and they come and knock on the door, and I don't even come to answer the door. I send Max mm -hmm. to come outside yeah. and say, go wash in the Calcasieu River. Um, and the, the, obviously the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff would be furious. Uh -huh. Who does this guy think he is? Yeah. So that's an interesting question. Yeah, it is. It is. And uh, Melanie says maybe the general's used to being in charge and doesn't like relying on other people. And I think that's both a question or an answer for why why does he storm away? He's not used to being snuffed. He doesn't want to need somebody. And then they kind of turn him away anyways. He didn't like going there to begin with. He right. didn't like having to ask somebody. Yeah. And then and he's then, never told no. Right. But he really wasn't told no. It's just not the way he wanted to right. do it. Well, I mean, he had a different plan. He brought yeah. gold. He brought uh, silver. He brought clothing. He brought mm -hmm. these things to to have this audience to sit down and negotiate. And It didn't play out the way that he wanted it to play out. Yeah. Um, and, and we think we, we have it figured out that this is the way it's supposed to be for me to get healing mm -hmm. or for me to find peace with God or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's not the way that, that we want. God, yeah, we like, we like to write our own story yeah, a little bit. And Naaman wasn't hearing any of that. So yeah. he's furious, he's in a rage, and he storms away. Mm -hmm. So we come to the main question. Yes. It's main to me. It's so interesting. Why did Elisha not come to the door? Elisha invited him to come. Yeah. He told the king of Israel, send him to me. But Elisha didn't even go outside. Right, right. So I think there's, there's several different options here. Some are silly, some are serious, but we're sticking with some serious options here. I think he doesn't want payment. I don't think Elisha wants this, this envoy that he's bringing with him, the shekel, the gold, the silver, the clothes. I don't think he wants to be considered as somebody who can just be paid for his miracles. Okay, I think that's valid that um, Elisha had heard about all this that, that Naaman was bringing, and he didn't want to be paid mm -hmm. for this. He didn't want... Yeah. Uh, this is for God. Yeah, this is for God. It's not for him. He's not doing it for services. Mm -hmm. And so he could just kind of cut to the chase and not personally see mm -hmm. Naaman. Yeah. yeah. What else do you think? I think a second reason is that um, Elisha didn't want the attention to be on Elisha. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. that if if he goes out and and he conducts the miracle or invokes the prayer, Ooh, then yeah. Naaman gives the credit to Elisha. Yeah. And Elisha didn't want the credit to go to him. Mm-hmm. He wanted the credit to go to God. So he sent him to so the kind Jordan of a little River. bit of a humility move there. I like that. Yeah. That's a that's a valid reason. I mean, why why would you why would you want somebody to make the mistake of saying that I have the power when you know it's God? Mm-hmm. And so I think you're right. I think he deflects a little bit. Mm-hmm. I'll just ask, is Elisha scared of getting leprosy? Ooh, that's a valid point. I mean, is he social distancing? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a valid point. Um, in, in that day and time, Old Testament, New Testament, they really believed that leprosy was highly contagious. Mm-hmm. And it's still debatable as I to mean, whether yeah. it, it was or is. Yeah. But back then, they definitely believed it was highly contagious. Elisha knows the condition of Naaman, mm-hmm. and it could be that he didn't want to come in personal contact with yeah. him. Yeah, and I think that would also be another reason that uh, – Naaman would have been furious as he's going to make this audience and this guy's going to see me and then, oh, he's scared because I have this disease, like just being discriminated Felt against a little bit. Ultra rejected. Yeah. Yeah. Ultra rejected. Uh, Elisha does see Naaman, mm-hmm. but it's after the healing takes right, place. Right. After Naaman is healed, now Elisha comes outside and talks to mm-hmm. him. So that could very well be the reason yeah. that he didn't want to get leprosy. Mm-hmm. But I think also that he wanted all of the praise to go to God. I think so. I think he was a great prophet in the fact that he, a, a good prophet knows his place. Mm-hmm. You can do these works of God and you can do miracles and pro- proclaim God's word to people, but you are just a messenger. Mm-hmm. You are not God. And I think Elisha knows his place. I think he knows if I do this in the wrong way, people will say, oh, look at that, how great Elisha is. And mm-hmm. he doesn't want that. I think he, he knows that it's got to be the God of Israel. Who okay, let's hear some comments. Word. Don't break my heart, people. <laughs> Oh, Terry Graves says his pride was wounded. Probably Who's, talking about Naaman. Okay, that's the why he stormed away. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Heather says in asking why he stormed out, maybe he thought that the solution was too simple to be to be effective. Ah, I think that's valid too. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Terry also says on the kings, maybe there was some bad blood between the two. Mm-hmm. And uh, Heather, ooh, I like this one, Heather. Uh, it says uh, for Naaman, maybe it was meant to be an act of faith on the part of Naaman. Are, are you just going to listen to what somebody says, even if it looks a little bit silly? Mm. I, I mean, because, I mean, it is. It's a little bit silly. Go to the dirty water, dip yourself seven times. It didn't make any sense. Yeah, especially if you're, uh, if as believers, we kind of see seven seems to be a special number that we see throughout the Bible. Holy number. Uh-huh. I mean, what is the seven cannonballs mm-hmm. into a river? It's a little bit silly if you don't know what that is. So I'd like that, mm-hmm. Heather. Mm-hmm. Like a, a little bit of act of faith. Mm-hmm. I like that. Okay, that, that's really good. I appreciate your input at home uh, doing that. The bottom line meaning of the story uh, to me, and, and Kate and I were talking about this before we started, has to do with the healing power of God. All through the Old Testament, all through the New Testament, we see story after story of God healing people. Um, the obvious question is, does God still heal people today, or is that just from... Is that just a, a long time ago mm-hmm. in a place far, far away? I I have to disagree. I think, or not disagree. I, I know you think this too. I think God still heals today. I, I think that when people say this was just a long time ago, I think maybe we're, maybe our eyes get clouded over a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, God still does this through hospitals, through doctors and nurses. And also by that, you've said it time and time again, by that healing touch of God's hand. Yeah, I believe that with all my heart. And that's why it's so appropriate when we're sick to go to the doctor, to go to the hospital, but to ask people in the church to pray for you. And you pray for yourself. As God healed people in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it's our faith that God still heals people today. Um, And we've seen it. And we've seen it. We definitely have. And then finally and ultimately, God heals in eternity. And God heals on the other side. Um, the day comes for us sometime that we don't find physical healing. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, we find that healing. Every single time. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the names of the Lord, Yahweh Jireh. I am the Lord who heals you. And we see this in this great story of Naaman and Elisha, the king of Syria, the king of Israel, and the hero of the story, the unnamed slave girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other comments or? Let's see. Oh, T- 
Terry says, Naaman's servant is a Christian and tells him to go wash his body. What harm could it do? Mm. What harm is giving God a try? Yeah, there's, for there's, sure. Yeah. Good letting, observation. Letting that faith come in there. I liked that comment. Okay, next Wednesday mm-hmm. at 12 noon, we'll look at a story from the New Testament. We so appreciate you tuning in and um, giving your comments and yes. suggestions, and we look forward to next Wednesday. Um, anything else, Grim Katie? I just think that it's so important never discount the power of God and never discount giving faith a try. And what, what harm could it do? I like that. As what harm could God. it do? Yes. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this story from 2 Kings chapter 5. Thank you for the healing power of God that was alive then and is alive even this day. Help us to call upon you and trust in you. Be alive in our lives this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching and God bless you.